adultery. The word itself conveys shame, failure, scandal. But unless I miss my guess, every one of us knows someone who's done it, and some among us have been guilty of it. It is clearly a serious matter, but does it mean the same thing today as it did when the Ten Commandments were written? Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. Much as we don't like to admit it, sexual mores have moved and shifted over the centuries. We tend to think that there has always been just one rigid, unbending standard, but simply consider this. In Old Testament times, there were plenty of examples of men having multiple wives, and there are even laws in the Old Testament governing such marriage arrangements. Furthermore, Judging by the different punishments attached to different sexual infractions, it is clear that the ancient Israelites could differentiate between more serious and less serious acts. But even with changing mores and standards, adultery has continued to be considered a serious matter. So what is it exactly? What did it mean back then? What does it mean today? Contrary to popular opinion, the ancient Israelites were not some sexually repressed people who considered any sex outside of marriage to be taboo. Like today, people certainly engaged in sexual activity outside the bonds of marriage. The fact that the ancient Israelites developed a whole set of laws related to very specific sexual acts, each with a different consequence or punishment, attests to the fact that these various acts were common enough to require re regulation. The various laws didn't just pop up out of nowhere. They developed in relation to the actual realities of life in the ancient world, which turns out not to be that different from our own. But of all the different prohibited sexual offenses listed in the Old Testament, only one, adultery, made it into the Ten Commandments. Why? Well, let's be clear what adultery is. It is engaging in sex with a person who is married to another person or a married person engaging with sex with someone other than one's spouse. Not about sex between unmarried persons or any of a, of a number of other possibilities. But even in the Old Testament, there were different levels of punishment for adultery, depending on the exact circumstance. Now, in our day and age, we consider what goes on between consenting adults to be no one else's business. But there are still legal consequences for adultery, though not in the form of punishment. Rather, adultery becomes valid grounds for divorce. But no one is going to be taken into the city center and stoned to death, not these days, not in our country anyway. So adultery is and has been considered serious in spite of the changing cultural mores and the evolving punishments or consequences for committing it. But what is it all about anyway? Some believe it is lodged in old property law where a woman became a man's property and this was a way to protect a man's property. Perhaps, but it's a pretty cynical approach. I think there's more going on than property rights. In the first place, as Old Testament scholar Walter Harrelson points out, it was a protection for married women in the ancient world from being taken advantage of by any man who might fancy her. But more than that, it is a reminder that sexual unions are not to be taken lightly. We human beings develop emotional attachments with our partners, attachments that are deep and abiding. Adultery has the ability almost uniquely to destroy the trust on which those attachments are built. And if we know anything about the Bible and what it teaches in broad terms, it is that there is a lot of weight placed on the integrity of relationships. And anything that harms or destroys human relationships is almost by definition a violation of God's intentions for life in human community. We were created for life in community. We weren't created to be random individuals looking out only for ourselves. We were built to be in community with one another. 
And whatever threatens the bonds of community, whether it is the marriage bond or the larger web of relationships in which we live, that's to be protected against. Look, adultery happens. It happened in the ancient world and it happens now. We no longer put people to death for it, thank heavens, as they did in the ancient world, but we take it seriously nevertheless. Can relationships strained by adultery be healed? Of course, but there will always be scar tissue in the relationship. Far, far better to heed the command than to risk destroying precious relationships. Tomorrow, the prohibition against stealing. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.